Hello again, I'm Dr. Mitten at the Eye Research Institute at Oakland University. Uh, just continuing on the use of the uh, Four Peaks and DNA sequencing software, so you get your sequencing back. So if you watched my previous movie where you learn how to download your AB1 sequencing files, say from the Iowa State Sequencing Center, and view it with Four Peaks, a uh, free viewer available for the Mac. So now you have your, your peaks, and you're looking at the electrophoretogram, and you think your sequence is okay, and now you'd like to check and see if this matches what you think it does, say, in the mouse genome. So what I've done is just uh, selected along the letter base calls here this blued area of sequence. You can basically, in four peaks, go up to the Edit menu and copy that sequence. And you can test it yourself going on the web, or you can also... Uh, take your sequence right away and use this four peak software itself to say you want to blast the sequence you can send it to nucleotide blaster the most genome and you can basically send it off it'll launch your web browser put the job in for you sometimes it takes a few minutes so I've already run one and now you're back with your web browser you're basically here at the NCBI site and it has done a blast of the sequence to do an, a logical alignment uh, this one aligns it both to mRNA sequences and to genome sequences. And so, for instance, here I can see I've got a match here on mouse chromosome 17. And it's showing how the matches of my query is this section here is matching 100% basically with the subject, which is a piece of DNA on chromosome 17. And it turns out that this is also the peripheral 2 gene. So you also have a match up here with the some of the peripheral to messenger RNA sequence. The other thing you can do is take that sequence yourself, just copy it. You go to my website, kenmitten.com. You can go to my staff links page. There's a quick viewer here you can call up. Uh, you can go right to the NCBI PubMed Blast uh, tools. You can also use my polymerase 2 uh, data, which we provide free for other scientists in the world loaded up in the, the University of California Santa Cruz genome browser. Let this launch for a few seconds. This will bring up basically uh, the genome viewer that we can, here it comes now, that we can basically do what's called a BLAT search on. So that's going to be in the 2007 sequence assembly. So if you go to the home button, uh, the genome browser, there's a tool called BLAT. It's still on mouse 2007 build, so I can paste in some of that sequence we just copied, and we're going to basically match this to the genome, hopefully. So we'll submit it, and it's processed very quickly, and you can see here we have 100% match with 199 spanning bases. That's probably at the top of the tail the best blast, uh, the best blat match to look at. So if we click on browser, It'll show us a graphical view of where our PCR sequence is matching the mouse genome. And right here it's showing us our sequence. And you can see you're buried somewhere in the mouse genome at this location on chromosome 17. One thing we'll do right away is zoom back. But even before we do that, you can see the gene that we're matching up here is peripherin 2, also known as the RDS gene. That's where we expected this wild type PCR product to come from because this is a PCR test to see uh, if a mouse has at least one or two copies of the normal uh, non-mutated peripheral 2 gene. So I'm just going to zoom out here about 10 times so we can see where we are in the forest. And again, here's the your sequence that we've made a match and you can see it matches in this exon sequence of the perforin gene. I'm going to zoom out again 10 times. And you can see the match. This is a PCR that targets exon 2. There's exon 1, 2, and 3 of the most perforin gene. So this PCR product has basically worked and we can use this now as a genomic test or a genetic test to uh, look for the normal form of this gene in our mice.